Lake Tahoe lies in the Sierra Nevada mountain range between California and Nevada. It is 79 miles long and 23 miles wide. Villages and towns dot many miles of the shoreline, especially on the California side. And there are also miles of state park, forest service, and conservancy land. The mountains rise from lake level at 6,200 to over 10,000 feet in elevation. The entire geographical arena is prime black bear habitat. The population estimate is between five and 600 animals. Although the grizzly bear is emblazoned on the California state flag, these bears no longer inhabit either California or Nevada. My organization, the Bear League, was founded 13 years ago with the intent and mission to mitigate bear-human conflicts, primarily by educating residents and visitors on proper bear awareness. One of our most important and often repeated mantras is, a fed bear is a dead bear, or don't feed our bears, as is clearly evidenced by these few examples of our posters. By wallpapering the Tahoe Basin with these posters and other literature, we quickly became the organization people called for advice and assistance with bear encounters of any imaginable type. California Department of Fish and Game, DFG, and the Nevada Department of Wildlife, ENDO, kills so-called problem bears, and the Bear League prefers non-lethal solutions. Since our founding in 98, we have grown into the organization and was called upon by residents and law enforcement at least 10 to 1 over the governmental wildlife agencies. Our membership consists of 250 trained volunteers who respond to bear calls in every neighborhood, and we have 1,500 supporting members. We answer a 24-7 bear hotline and keep records on every call. By 2001, we had authored and facilitated the adoption of garbage ordinances in the two California counties and one in Nevada. In 2007, a serious drought, along with two forest fires, created an extreme loss of natural forage and water for wildlife. It was the Bear League who was called upon by the public for help, to complain to, and for finding a solution to the appearance of more bears in residential areas than ever before. They foraged in our dumpsters because they were hungry, and because too often human error allows this. They made day beds under our homes in order to be close to the lake, because that's where the only available water was. Soon their hunger brought them into our homes, and they left terrible messes in their wake. No one liked this. Some people called the DFG for depredation. The traps rolled in. There is no relocation policy in California, so this trap means dead bears and angry neighbors. In California, whatever bear enters a trap is killed whether it is the target bear or not. So neighbors sabotage the traps quite often and have vandalized the homes of people who obtain depredation permits. The road deaths quickly mounted also. The media jumped on the developing story. I will ex exhibit a scan of several newspapers and read a few statements and quotes from each. Two bears killed in traffic collisions. Add two more to the bear death count in Tahoe. More bears are coming down to the Truckee River or Lake Tahoe because the mountain creeks and streams are drying up. Making life bearable. Clashes between humans and bears in Lake Tahoe are at an all-time high, according to Bryant and the DFG. Food for bears is dwindling in the forest. Thanks to a drought, berries are shriveling on the vine. Water is in short supply. And last month's Angora fire charred 3,100 acres and a lot of bear foraging ground. And the problems escalate. More bears under homes, destroying heat ducts, getting stuck in trash compactors. Soon they are beginning to break into occupied homes and restaurants. 
property damage adds up to hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. The news goes nationwide. New York Times. By now, residents and law enforcement in desperation begin to question whether the trash ordinances were a good idea after all. We didn't hardly have any break-ins before we had the boxes, said Deputy Sheriff John Lozagna of Placer County. With the increase in break-ins, at least three neighborhood families plan to give up their vacations to defend their homes. More home invasions. More terrified and angry people. More damage. In one house, the burner was turned on by a bear and most of the house burned down, risking yet another forest fire. With the two previous fires just barely extinguished, this was more than anyone could take. There's Death Highlights Tahoe's problem. With streams going dry in the backcountry, bears have been coming into neighborhoods in record numbers. The Bear League has been receiving 150 to 200 calls per day, compared to 50 or so per day two years ago, said Ann Bryan. We chased this bear out from under a lakefront home where eight small children and two terrified parents live. Wildlife biologist Carl Lackey from Endow was fighting the same battle on the Nevada side of Tahoe. Incline works on root of bear issue. The drought is bringing even wild bears, older ones I've never seen or caught before, and they are half the weight of garbage bears, Lackey said. This yearling got an apple from one well-meaning resident, only to be shot dead by a wary neighbor soon after. We decided something had to be done. I had heard of diversionary supplemental feeding and began to research this option, even though it made me cringe at the thought. New approach to bear problem. Bear League Eyes Backcountry Feeding Mission. The lack of moisture has led to a shortage of natural food, forcing the animals into civilization, often ending with bears shot by alarmed residents or law enforcement, or struck by vehicles. The Bear League aims to do something about it, devising a plan to draw bears back into the wilderness. Jason Hawley, wildlife biologist for the DFG, agreed that less food is driving bears to wander farther, sometimes into populated areas, but Hawley said the department's general policy would oppose feeding bears. It's an unnatural situation that forces bears to congregate. Who knows what long-term problems that could create? Holly said, if the smell of people is on the food, they could be more likely to associate people with food in the future, and they could be more susceptible to hunters. We wondered if this was natural, and if the hamburger that he just ordered was not going to smell like humans. The bears are so hungry they are coming into people's homes, so we hope to get permission to do this, if not just for the bears, for the homeowners too, Bryant said. With so much news coverage about our plan, the whole community stepped up to offer their help. Distraught residents began to call our number to plead with us to help save the ransacked neighborhoods from the desperate bears. Several offered the use of their helicopters, planes, and bullets. Orchard growers with nut and fruit trees arrived at our office with trucks full of food. They unloaded and said, you're the only ones who can help now. Please do what's right. We had to tell everyone that permission had been denied. Some callers informed us they intended to throw garbage and food into the woods right behind their homes if we wouldn't help to divert an obvious, looming disaster. We were extremely concerned about the potential problems this could create. Battle over feeding Tahoe bears. A bear advocacy group that planned to do a backcountry food drop for Tahoe bears this week has run into an opposition from the state DFG. 
while agreeing that a drought has dried up natural foods leading to a proliferation of cabin break-ins by bears, the department officials say supplying food could do more harm than good. Tahoe bears have weathered other droughts, said Doug Updike, a wildlife biologist who heads the department's state bear program. What makes this an emergency over other years, he asks. Bear advocates have an answer. It has become an emergency situation because food shortage is putting humans at risk as well as bears. People do need to be more vigilant now than ever, Updike said. Residents need to reach out and make sure the whole neighborhood is bear proof. Well, this comment just about brought on a war. Everyone was doing everything they could. Some were even sitting out in front of their homes with shotguns, shooting at any bear that walked by. Bryant declined to say whether the group still plans the food drops. We learned some hikers have taken food into the backcountry a few days ago. We checked the area, the food was gone, and we're no longer getting calls from the nearest neighborhoods. Bear break-ins. Despite the precautions when it comes to this year's escalating Bruin encounters, some homeowners are waving a white flag. Mr. Thomas illustrated the point recently when he boarded up all the doors and windows to his residence and spray painted, we give up, the bears won. The Bear League reported that 65 bears have died on Tahoe roads this summer. Bryant said she expects road hits to be 400% higher than past years by the end of the fall. Human encounters with bears are up higher than they've been in the past 20 years, the DFG reported, naming this year's drought as a primary factor. Wildlife biologist Jason Holly of the DFG said the drought is driving wild bears to neighborhoods to forage for food. The Bear League would like to plant and scatter food in the backcountry to remind bears how to forage naturally, Bryant said, but state wildlife officials have responded coolly to the proposal. This is a graph of roadkill bears from 99 to 2010. It's clear to see how dire the situation had become in this respect also. Now our senator gets involved. A meeting was called with most of the stakeholders. Several homeowners associations were also represented and they asked the senator to order the DFG to start killing all the bears. Thankfully, this solution was not considered. With 69 bears killed on Tahoe's highway so far this year and reported human encounters with bears higher than at any time in the past 20 years, no one who attended denied that bears have become a nuisance around the residential areas this year. And so the only option gets underway. Food was first placed behind the last tier of homes just into the forest. In the first test neighborhoods, it quickly became evident that it was working. Break-ins ceased. Everyone was encouraged, and the project gathered steam. Armies of volunteers filled backpacks and hiked the orchard food farther and farther back behind as many designated areas as possible. It was known exactly where the drops were taking place, and in those neighborhoods, the battle was immediately over. The carnage continued in neighborhoods where it was too risky to take food. After all, this was supposedly illegal. This saw was one who benefited most by the help. She is seen here with her own two cubs and two cubs that she adopted after a resident illegally killed their mother for trying to get into his garbage. The diversionary feeding continued, by now quite a long distance from the homes, until the snows fell. That winter we had no bears denning under homes. Normally there are at least 30 to 40 bears who do this. The winter of 0708, praise God, brought plenty of snow. The drought had ended, but we worried about the predictions made by the DFG and Endow when spring arrived. Would the bears be waiting to be fed? Had we caused more harm than good? 08. Bear problems down in Incline Village. Bear activity has dropped significantly from last summer, according to wildlife biologist Lackey. It has been, from my perspective, quite a bit slower than last year. 
and our personnel handled fifteen hundred thirty one complaints in two thousand seven compared to three hundred fifty in two thousand eight and bryant of the bear league also noted that bear activity is down it's definitely not as chaotic as last year a quiet year for bears fall of 08 but overall the summer of 2008 was a quiet one for bears in the Tahoe region. It was actually about one-third as busy as last year, said Ann Bryant of the Bear League. In comparison, Bryant said this year 12 bears were killed by cars to last season 78, and the Bear League's call volume went from 100 to 200 calls a day to around 50. What would the next year have in store? Was this too good to be true? September of 09. Lake Tahoe bear season down, but maybe not out. Overall, it has been a very slow season, Lackey and Doc said. Compared to 2007 when Lackey came into contact with 26 bears in less than one month, 2009 is shaping out to be a very slow year. So far, he's received 154 calls about bears. We're not even going to hit 200 this year, he said. In 2007, Endow received about 1,500 bear-related calls. Here is a graph of our bear calls, 03 through 09. This includes sightings as well as nuisance calls. The sightings are all in neighborhoods. We hope we never have another year like 2007. But if natural disasters should once again create a dilemma where residents, property, and bears are in such extreme danger, we will ask our state wildlife agencies to cooperate with us and implement emergency supplemental diversionary feeding programs. We will pay all costs and provide all the manpower. All we'll need is sensible advice and their blessing. I still believe, under normal circumstances, that a fed bear can ultimately be a dead bear. But I am now convinced, if done correctly and when necessary, a fed bear can also be a good bear. Thank you very much for your kind and open-minded attention. I hope this information can be of help in an emergency situation elsewhere. This is Ann Bryant. Good day.